Hello everybody, this is Bobby Mills for TheIndependent.com with the last go-around of the Bobby Mills Independent Sports Talk Show. We have the old standby Z-Dub, Eric Williams. Did I say Z-Dub, E-Dub, Eric Williams? Jimmy Langan. Jimmy, the venerable Jimmy Langan. We have Coach Rob Misick from GICC, my son, here today to analyze. We're going to analyze the boys' state tournament, fellas. There's a lot to talk about, especially when we start uh, with Class A. Uh, girls' state tournaments in the books. One more, one down, and one to go. So in Class A, guys, uh, who's the number one seed? Edith? I think it's is you it La Vista. The, the La Naturally, Vista is the number one seed, um, followed by Lincoln Pius at the two, and then um, uh, Creighton and uh, well, Papillion La Vista. They play Millard South, who's the eight seed. Um, Pius will play Omaha South, who's a seven. That's a sneaky seven, if you Ooh, ask me, boy. right there. Yes, it is. Um, Creighton Preps, the three seed, and they will host uh, or have Norfolk in their first game, and then it's Kearney and Omaha Central, which, you know, that could be a good one, too. I think the four and the five, uh, I think uh, Kearney, it's going to be a tough draw, but I think it's a fair draw for them, too, but, uh, that one. How, how much stock, gentlemen, do you put on uh, teams closing strong or riding a win streak? Um, you know what I'm getting at, Kearney. And as opposed to a Creighton Prep who maybe didn't play so well at the end of the year, is there... To me, that's big, but am I wrong, Jimmy? No, I think, I think the more you win, the, you're going to grasp that, and people will accept their roles, and they think, hey, we don't have to change anything. What we're doing, we're going to change. So, uh, is that part of it. I think maybe Creighton Prep, maybe, you know, you take a look at that, that might be an advantage to them. Somebody showed some weaknesses, and they didn't realize they had them, and thank God we got them yeah. mm -hmm. a week before the season yeah. was over. So I think those things were very critical. I do, I do think we said from the get-go, there's not one great team in Class A. Mm -hmm. This is a wide open state tournament right now. Uh, if you actually, think, when you, you're talking about maybe the two weakest teams are playing each other, and that's your two and seven seed. Yeah. You know, yeah. uh, could be. I'm not saying Miller and South, I didn't know they were the eight seed, but the two and the sevens, a uh, pie showed their vulnerability when they got yeah. beat and they had to get the wild card. And Carney High won in overtime, or they wouldn't even be in the state tournament oh, no. because of the pious loss. Yeah. You know, I mean, then they would have grabbed that. But Lincoln Northeast was a pretty good basketball team. They but they, up, yeah. but they ended up, you know, had some injuries. They had that kid with break his foot. They had a player that suspended. So things change. It'll be interesting. But that's one thing Carney stayed away from is winning this this many games in a row, 18, 19, you know, whatever they're going to get. Man. And, uh, you know, so I think they all accept their role. And they've got mm -hmm. some. They got a nice team that does a lot of things well. Yeah. So how about the first matchup, Millard South and, and Papillion, the best of Millard South gets there by beating Lincoln Pius. That's, I think it's one of, what, four or five teams Pius played in Class A. So uh, Millard South, I don't remember, I don't think they, well, they, I don't know if they met during the year or not. I'm thinking maybe not, but uh, who's, your, who's your pick there, Rob? Uh, I think Papillion's got a lot of good pieces. I think Ed Chang's one of the best players in the state, and then, you know, their point guard, uh, I'm going to butcher his name, but Akin Wole is probably, for my money, the best point guard in the state. Numbers probably don't say that, but he's a, you know, he's a consummate floor general. And I, I like Papillion La Vista there, probably double digits. Well, but what about Carney and Omaha Central? God, that's a tough one for me. Central's been playing awful well, man, but hard to go against Carney. It's right now win streak, man. And Carney beat him earlier. Yeah, yeah they yeah. did. They certainly did. Mm -hmm. And I don't see, I don't know if Central, I, don't, I think they're both at full strength in that in that respect. Norfolk Prep, I don't think those, have those two teams met? I don't believe they have. Norfolk's played plenty. It's not like Norfolk hasn't played any Metro teams. Yeah. Or Carney. Yeah. They're both, both, yeah. Carney yeah. They're both of them, yeah. Both of them are well, you know, this isn't going to be something where you, where we're looking at somebody that didn't play Class A competition. Yeah. Right. They've been yeah. playing it all year long. Yeah. I mean, if you're talking about North Platte, it would be a different story, but Omaha South and Pius, I there, there's a pr score predictor that's on USA Today, which, you know, is neither here nor there. They've got Pius beaten Omaha South. I just can't see that. I, you know, Omaha South, I think, would beat Millard South. I think, I think Omaha South at the seventh seed. I know they've had their ups and downs, but I could see them being there on Saturday. Just with that, uh, well. that side of that bracket, they'll have the winner of the uh, Creighton Prep in Norfolk. Very well. Could. I think Omaha South could be there on Saturday morning. Good I, point. I do too. And and you know when you've got Bruce Chubbuck Senior, yeah. he, he's you give him a week to game plan for for a couple different teams. I think that's a huge advantage. And then you got you've got a rope will probably be the best player on the floor in, in the first game, and and that's a huge advantage for them. 
I, I say, I'm gonna, I'll go out on a limb with all these predictions. I'll say Prep and Papio in the finals and Papio winning it, so I'll get a lot of letters if I'm wrong. So uh, anybody want to go out as predict the state champion? Anybody? I'll go La Vista over, uh, I'll do Omaha, uh, uh, excuse me, Omaha South. Anybody else want to stick their neck out? I'll take Carney High. Oh, great, Carney man. Up. Wouldn't that be something? I told, I, <laughs> I told Drake Veronic at, at Polly's visitation, I said, you're going to win a state championship with this team. He said, can I write that down? <laughs> I tell you what, it was a cool thing that was going around on Facebook this past week after they had won the district. The entire team went over to Coach Veronic's uh, uh, grave site, and they, they took a picture there and, and mm -hmm. uh, kind of memorized memorialize uh, Coach Bronick and then uh, Drake getting to his first state title. So yeah, well, that was they, really cool. It was, and they were all sitting there at that visitation and from the beginning to end. So they had a connection with him because he was there to start. So, all right, Class A in the books. What about Class B? We, uh, boy, that's a, that's a good one too. Anybody slip in that surprised you guys? Um, I, I guess Crete might be one that, but that's a good basketball team. Yeah, they just yeah. barely slipped by down there the day before they played uh, Omaha South at the Hoops Classic. Uh, Bennington is probably comes from the weakest district, so he double read because, see, I, I, I don't have my glasses, <laughs> folks, and I'm not going to lie, I can't see this very well. Hey, that, that, this is a work. <laughs> well, uh, Gretna got the number one seed out of that, and, and I think one through three, all of them could have been easily yeah. the oh, one yeah, seed. Yeah, so yeah. Uh, one, uh, Gretna will be playing Bennington, um, and then they'll have... The winner of that one will have the winner of the four and five seed, that's Alliance and Platteview. Uh, the bottom half of the bracket will have Scotts Bluff as the two seed, and they'll uh, be playing Crete, and then they'll get the winner of Elkhorn South and Aurora. Again, a lot of good matchups in that uh, division. And like I said, I think one through three all could have been a one seed in there. Mm -hmm. Anybody think that Aurora got a bad draw in the first round? Well, I think Elkhorn South's a tough, Ooh. tough draw for Aurora. Aurora's got a, you know, good a shot as anybody at winning a state championship, but... You know, you've got the Costello kid for Elkhorn South and some nice pieces to go along with him. And that, if I were you know, Coach Leininger, I'd, 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 who's, who's a great coach himself, I'd be a little concerned about the draw. That's a tough six seed. Yeah, that's, I think that's a bad draw. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, I, Jimmy, what do you think? I think well, that's a tough first draw. Well, when I try to look at Class B and who can win it, I look at could this team play in the Class A field? Yeah. There you go. Okay, and I think Aurora could. Mm -hmm. just, I think Scotts Bluff could. Yeah. I think Gretna could. And I don't know if Elkhorn South could or not. They might. Well, let's just say they could. Yeah. Line, yeah. But I don't know if the other four have a chance. No, yeah. I agree with and, you. On and that. so what I'm saying when I look at that, I'm not saying that Creek can't upset somebody, but for them to win three games is going to be really hard for yeah. them to do that. Yeah. So I'm kind of looking at that field in the B that these guys could win play in the A field, and yeah. if they can do that. They have a shot, but like again, any of these teams could lose first round. They have they've shown some vulnerability. Uh, Aurora has played a couple games where they played teams with losing records and needed a last second shot or a tip in to yeah, win. Yeah. But they've awful played. They've played really well. Yeah. well. I'll tell you what's interesting about the Central Ten. Aurora won that. Okay, Creek never made it to pass that's, the semifinal. No, they didn't. Right. You know, but that's how tough that conference yeah. can be at times. You know, so yeah. even it was on the other side, right? Yeah, that's and maybe, a good point. And maybe Creek then also had a fairly easy district to get there with. Who knows? Yeah. You know what I mean? I, I, you know, when you talked about Bennington, sometimes you just happen to be in the right yeah. five teams in your mm -hmm. bracket. So yeah. what's it like to be on the floor and officiate Aurora? <clears throat> what's it, what, what do you see out there? The chemistry has to be really good. And who do you guard, man? Yeah, I don't know. When you're refereeing, you're just trying to get down the other end of the floor. Yeah. And make sure that somebody's not getting that fouled too hard. Man. You try to let him play a little bit. Yep. If it's going up for a rebound. But the, the, um, Aurora's got some different pieces because they got a couple of kids that can maybe goal 10. Yeah. You know, so yeah. you have to be prepared for that. You know, they've know. got a couple of kids that can dunk. Yeah. You know, and you, you don't know who they can. A lot of times, you'll have one player that you have to kind of watch a little bit. But with Aurora, that's probably not the case. But you're very much aware of some of the kids' size and how big they yeah. are. And, but they're, they're, you know, asking that question, and I, I, you know, when you ref GICC a couple years ago, they had a player, and he's playing for Wyoming right yeah, now. Yeah. But it was he was very, very, everybody in the crowd noticed him, all the referees noticed him. And you wanted to make sure that you didn't do anything to give, give him an advantage, yeah. but yeah. you also didn't want to do anything 
to create a disadvantage yeah. just because of his size. Yeah. And I think that's the same thing kind of true when you work at Aurora game too. Yeah. You want to make sure that they're not getting an advantage by doing some things they do, but you got to make sure that they're not, you don't create a disadvantage for them either. Yeah, very interesting point. You know, Nita, what about, I think Allen scored four points and had 10 or eight or 10 rebounds, and they still won well, without him. The, the big thing is they've got that depth and they've got multiple guys that can get, that can get uh, points on the board and, and do their jobs. But, you know, watching, I've watched three games now of Aurora and every single time I just kind of look at it and I send it off camera over here. It's kind of like a Floyd Mayweather boxing fight, you know. Everybody wants to watch it, but there's really nothing flashy about it. They just yeah. do their job and they get, the, they get the games over and they win the game. So, um, you know, Aurora, there's nothing really flashy about them. They just find a way to get the job done, and, and that's what they're going to have to do. they got a tough half of that bracket to get through to make it to Saturday. I'll tell you one thing they do is when Austin Allen grabs a rebound, he grabs it a little different than most players. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. So, yes, so, so, so if you don't think that's flashy, I got something coming. Cause that true. is pretty impressive. Yeah. Yeah. When he grabs a rebound, the whole of that man, that man, yeah, he, he does play like at a man. different level. Yeah. You know what I mean? Yeah. Yeah. Him and the yeah. Billion La Vista guy are the two. The, 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 the <laughs> yeah, you talk about yeah, Chang. Yeah. Chang. Yeah. Those two guys are yeah. completely different yeah. going up there for boards. Yeah, mm. they are. And they had the other different styles, but the so on. Uh, I'm going to get killed by the people 20 miles east of here. Uh, how about the finals? Can Platt do you? I've got Gretton and Platt in the semifinals, and you guys can change that. And then Aurora Scott's bluff. Let's just assume maybe that's what it is. What happens when, can Platteview give Gretna a big game, Rob? I, I think Gretna's depth, and Gretna's got too many weapons for, for you know, Platteview. But then again, when you've got 6'10", 6'11", inside, that creates Ooh. a bunch of matchup problems. But Gretna's got two or three six seven kids that are just I, yeah. pretty skilled. And again, not flashy. They just kind of match in waves. But I think that was a 10-point game most of the time in district finals. But I, I like Gretna coming out of that. And then... Scott's Bluff Aurora is a rematch from the semifinals last year when that was that was a pretty closely contested game. And, you know, with Scott's Bluff, you've got Landon Walker inside that I think scored <clears> almost 40 <laughs> uh, in the district finals when they scored 113 or whatever. And then you've got Cookshausen, who, who's put up 40-some numerous times this year. So kind of contrasting styles where Aurora likes to slow it down a little bit. And, uh, Scott's Bluff wants it to track meet, so they're not going to run on Aurora, are they? No, no, I don't think. I, and Aurora does a great job of dictating their pace too. Ooh, but what anybody want to comment about that Western thing out there, that district where Gearing beats somebody ninety-eight to ninety-three, and then the next night they get beat one hundred and ten to ninety-four or whatever it was. You know that you can say, man, that's great basketball, but you just gave up one hundred and ninety, whatever it was in two games, but. I guess I'd rather see a game like that. My wife would say, no way. Can that help Scott's Bluff? They can't score 100 in the state tournament. So is that anything to consider going into an Aurora game or wherever they're, whoever they're going to play, Creed? Because I think, I, I don't really know. I, don't, I think it just discounted, don't you? Well, if people are going to, to win a basketball game the correct way <laughs> um, is, 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 there's not a correct way to win it. What I'm trying to say yeah. is, is, hey, you know, if they're going to give you this, and we're going to play you to 100. Yeah. Uh, if well, you're going to give us, if you're going to give us these layups, we're going to take them, and we're probably going to give up some over here. But we're going to do what we think we need to do yeah. to win the game. And so, if we can get into a shootout and play to 100, that's what we're going to do. Yeah. Well, somebody else thinks, hey, you know, like, um, you know, the Carney Catholic girls. When they, they played uh, Lincoln Christian the other day, they tried to play them to 35. Yeah, yeah they did. You know, and said, hey, you know what? We've, got, we've won 57 games in a row almost yeah. here. You know what I mean? Yeah. <laughs> but we got to play you guys yeah, to 35. And I think so that's what that's kind of interesting. I think probably Gearing thought, hey, with Scott's Bluff, we're going to try to get them so they're not playing great defense. We get them in a half court game, they're probably going to drill us. Yeah. So, and Scott's Bluff goes, hey, you know what? This might be fun. Let's just play yeah. that way. You <laughs> yeah. know? And so, they can. Yeah. yeah, right. But I, I, I don't think, I think Scott's Bluff will continue to try to play up tempo yeah. if they can. Yeah. If they can, that's going to be their, their benefit. If they can, but uh, I think that first game they yeah. have a chance to do that. that yeah. Second game, that's going to be totally different. Either sure, yeah. good South point. or Aurora. Yeah. Uh, they're going to they're going to slow that down in a hurry. But I think that first game they have a chance to maybe put some big points on the board. Yeah. Right. Is is Gretna and Aurora a possible matchup that could that could you know rival that Carney Catholic 
Lincoln Christian girls dream matchup is it, it is that a was that a dream matchup right there or I think so yeah. I think I, think, it, that I was. think it's a pretty big game yeah I think that was I don't think maybe yet that the Aurora Gretton thing with the Scotts Bluff being involved in it yeah you know I don't know if anybody's just could come out and just gonna say I think if Aurora and Gretna would have gone the entire season without you know, just maybe one loss. Yeah. You know what I mean? Yep. I think Aurora did their job on it. Gretna kind of yep. had fell asleep there, or I don't yep. know if I say yep. fell asleep, but they had a two week hiatus I anyway. Know. You know? Yeah. And, but at one time, you guys, uh, Aurora and Gretna could have been the number one ranked team yeah, in all class. class. Yeah. yeah. So that's why I think that would be yeah. a great match. Yeah. I think Aurora. Be. I think Aurora wins the state championship. I'm gonna call it right here. Aurora wins the state championship, and they're gonna beat Gretna. I. I'm going to go exact opposite. Me too. I'm going to say Gretna beats Aurora just because of Aurora having to play Elkhorn South and possibly Scotts Bluff leading up to that Saturday game. That's kind of a brutal and that trip is, to and the that, finals. That's, that is a tougher, tougher half. I think you made a good point there, Eric. It would be great to see Aurora win a state title yeah, with absolutely. those kids. That would be great. Yep. How about Class C when Rob, Coach Misick knows a lot about that. Jim's repped a lot of games. You've been to a lot of games. This is my favorite class. Um, Bago... What kind of a draw is that? We've got Bago and Carney Catholic. Yeah, yeah, that's a tough draw for Carney Catholic yeah, right yeah. off the shoot. Uh, uh, Winnebago is the number one seed. They uh, they beat SCOTUS in the district final. That was a heck of a oh, nail biter. Must man. have been a great game, great atmosphere, like we talked about last week. Uh, Winnebago will play Carney Catholic, um, and then the winner of that one will have Gothenburg, who's the four seed, and Wahoo's the five seed. So they'll have the winner of that game. Uh, the number two seed in this uh, class is uh, Newman, who will uh, go against O'Neill. That might have uh, chances of a decent game there, I think. And then uh, Scotus and Boystown. That's, a, I think, a tough draw for Scotus with Boystown as a six seed there. It, it, it is. And, and, you know, that, that was, a, uh, I think, a nine or ten point game earlier in the season. And, and I believe that's when Teddy Allen was, was dealing with the loss of his mother recently yeah. uh, with that. But. You know, I think that could go either way. That could be a real close game, or if, if things don't go well for Boys Town early, that could get to be a shellacking. Do you but, think the Winnebago game gives them a little bit of uh, an up of, of having to see Winnebago and then going against uh, another standout of Boys Town? I, I think that's, that was good preparation for them. And, and uh, SCOTUS, again, has been in the finals and semifinals the last two years, respectively. And and I think Scotus's kids, I don't think they're going to get rattled down at state, but uh, anytime you've got a kid that can put up 40 any given night, when you have to game plan for that. And, and maybe another thing that Scotus has got to consider, too, they were 0-14 from the arc against Winnebago. Oh, and if boy. shots don't start to fall, and Jimmy, you've seen this, mm -hmm. if perimeter shots don't start to fall, mm -hmm. that wears on you mm -hmm. as the game goes on. And if it's close, that could be a factor there, too. But I think with Scotus's experience, they come out on that one. What's really unique about the C1 guys this year is the eight teams that are in it. Carney Catholic is eighth in the wild card points. The yeah. top eight teams got to state. Yeah. yeah. That usually doesn't happen. A state no, tournament. No, it doesn't. No. A state tournament, like you look at Crete. Mm -hmm. I wonder what number they are in the wild card. Bennington. Bennington. Yeah. See, yeah. They're, they're way back there. The Southwest and C2. Oh, there you yeah. Go. yeah, the Miller. But Carney Catholic is the eighth yeah. best team yeah. in C1. Yeah. Cool. That's a tough draw for Winnebago being yeah. the one seed. Because normally when you're the one seed, you get to play 17 or 19 or somebody that snuck in there. Yeah. But this this time, you know, the, the two wild cards were taken. And then the eighth team in was yeah, Carney yeah. Catholic, who had to win their day. Don't count Carney Catholic out. I'm telling you that right now. They've got seniors. They played really well down the stretch. They won, what, 13 in a row? They're They're 14 in a row, yeah. Adam sent yeah, yeah, you look at Carney High and Carney Catholic. And I lived with Carney. It's been a while since somebody's lost. Oh, yeah. With the yeah, Carney yeah, Catholic yeah. girls. You, you oh, yeah, when was yeah. the last time somebody from Carney lost? Oh, oh, the Carney girls are going, dang, yeah. everybody's talking about us. Yeah. And they went to stay. Yeah, you know yeah I mean? all so, four schools. So, are yeah, because Carney Catholic is not bad. And not only that, think about this. How many games has Carney Catholic played in the state football? Oh, yeah, like championship. That's, I mean, yeah. And now and now they're going to be playing in the state basketball tournament. They're not going to be scared. They've got seniors galore on that team. Yeah, start five seniors. Yeah, it will be very inner. That is a really tough draw. And I think people are just overlooking the little bit because they beat St. Cecilia real bad and Scotus real bad. And those two teams did play great games that time. Yeah. You talked yeah. Kevin Asher. They didn't. St. Cecilia did not have one of their A games no. at all. And they needed a good game. And Scotus kind of played poor in the district championship they game. Did. Oh. So Winnebago is not an automatic lock here. No. no. I would have really put you on the spot, Coach Misek. You're in C1. I, I'm, I'm flat. 
What is it going to take for Winnebago to beat uh, Carney Catholic? What's going to take for Carney Catholic to beat Winnebago? Well, I think if you're Winnebago, you've got to make sure that that Holtmeyer doesn't go off for 25 or 30, and then you know you've got Ossentowski, and you've got Cam Moore, and you've got Huseman on the perimeter. That any of those guys are capable of making a number of threes if they get on a hot streak and. And I think everybody knows here that Winnebago wants to make it a track meet. And they'll give you open looks so they can get open looks. And and I think for Carney Catholic, you've, you've obviously Winget's going to get his points. But you can't let Gorin, you can't let LaPointe and Black Deer go off and hit three or four threes apiece. The one thing I noticed with uh, Bago at the Ho Hoops Classic is when they went into that press. Yeah. If you got past that first wave, oh, you're getting there layups. was no oh, hustle. No, there's getting oh, layups. There's I no think it's feast for famine with yeah. that. That's yeah. a great so, point. So, I mean... Uh, you know, if if you can just beat that first wave, it, it's an easy bucket for uh, Carney Catholic to go down there. For and Carney Catholic's got five guys on the floor that can handle and finish yeah. too, so that's an advantage to them, I think. Their depth, Carney Catholic. You think about their depth. Yeah. Because this class, this C one class, is absolutely amazing. And when I say this, I'm talking about the class B schools that could win A. What if in, any one of these C one schools dropped down to C two? Any one of them. Could win C two. Oh yeah, they they challenge. I mean, well, oh, yeah. maybe the favorite. Yeah. Oh, oh yeah, could be the well, favorite I, I to win C two. You. You, you look at Saint Cecilia; they're the one seed, and yeah. they are a heavy favorite. Oh C2. yeah, oh yeah, I heavy agree. favorite yeah. C two. How, how did they do against Boys Town? Uh, they got beaten over time. How did they do against Newman? I mean, yeah, got how beat. did they do against Scotus? So the only team they beat was Cardi County yeah. and beat them by two. Get the buzzer right yeah, 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 out of bounds underneath. Yeah, exactly. So what I'm saying is that's how tough this C one field is. Yeah, yeah, that is amazing. Yeah. So what about the second game, Coach Music? What about the – who do we have? Uh, Water, oh, Water. boy. I, I, I'm going to let you do that one, man, because that's <laughs> – that, That's been, been a, a, you know, a topic. I talked to Coach Gavers from Hastings College about that, just kind of randomly talking to him. And then, you know, Tino I talked to about that too. And I think uh, Wahoo's 1-3-1, if you haven't seen a 1-3-1, they play that a little bit different than, than most people do. If you haven't seen that, that's a little bit tough to get adjusted to. You know, if they extend that and trap, you know, it, it's – they're big up front. Uh, they've got an all-stater, Jake Rosicka, who's tough around the rim, and he can he's an inside-outside guy. <laughs> but then you've got Dawson Graham for Gothenburg, who's scored 30 and a half, you yeah. know, a couple times. And, and I think it hinges on if Gothenburg can make perimeter shots, they're going to be in the game. And, that, you know, you can't forget about Ty Clement, who's 6'7", nope. 6'8", seven, six, inside. And Wahoo might have trouble dealing with him, you know, against uh, – and if Wahoo gets in foul trouble with, with Quick or Shanahan inside – that puts a lot of pressure on them, so I, I think that's a toss-up. I, yeah, I, I don't. Well, I, I don't know what to tell you, Jimmy. I don't. You know, I, I think one thing of the, if, if we're going to really get down to it and really put it, uh, Winnebago being the one seed in the bracket, there are are they can get by Carney Catholic. I think they've got the, a, a decent chance to get to the final. I yeah. do. But this Boys Town, Scotus, Wahoo, Newman. They've been battle tested. Yeah. They've played each other all year yeah. long. You know, Gothenburg. How many games have they played against people like this? I know. Not enough. And even Carney Catholic, I'm afraid. Yeah. If there's a downfall, they haven't had the schedule yeah. that these people have played. You look at the other Luke Platt Conference schools. You know, and, yeah. and you know what they're doing. They're not in the state basketball tournament. You know, the other yeah. teams aren't yeah. in there. Yeah. They're not playing. You know, it, I mean, it's, it's something that you yeah. know was going to come up in C two, and I'll just take Saint Cecilia and Amherst. You know, that, yeah. those are two teams that had different schedules, totally. same type of records, but we saw yeah. them in the district. So I mean, uh, you know, the the strength of schedule and the what you play is surely a, a big factor down here. In yeah, and Amherst, yeah. and I will say this for the Amherst AD, he tried to improve this schedule. Yep. They played Gibbon. They played Wood River. You know, they, they, they went on and they're playing people in their holiday tournament. They played against Carney Catholic, Catholic yeah, that's, yeah. Ogallala, Saint North Pat, Platte, yeah. St. Pat. Yeah. They've tried to get that schedule up there, you know, because they're a D1 school. Yeah, they, they are. are. They're they a are. class D1 school. Mm -hmm. They just have their role that just got yeah, snuck just, over. Yep. So they're a C2 yep. and they're playing in C2. Yeah. That's basically And they play a lot of D1. They left that conference around us. And, yeah. if, and that conference not as strong. If the conference was strong, SCM would have got a wild card. Yeah, yeah. But exactly. SCM did not even get a wild card with two losses because yeah. of yeah. The, the, how weak that, that conference is. Getting back to C1, though, I mean, we talk about Newman, Boys Town, SCOTUS. Does O'Neill have a chance? And, and I've watched some O'Neill games. You know, they, they could have their moments, but it just seems like, you know, if it just it's a Jacqueline Hyde type of team. If they're bad, they're, they're, if they're struggling, 
they're not doing very well, and then if they're, they're you know, playing lights out, obviously they're going to separate themselves from the, the other team. The well, strength. I just answer that with one question. They, they did that in football. Yeah. yeah. You know what I mean? Yeah. So I think they can win it. I, I mean, I'm just, I, you know, if I was running a pick six ticket and said you had to run a pick <laughs> ticket, to win it this year, it would cost me Thousands. <laughs> yeah, yeah. That's right. I have to have so many yeah. combinations because yeah. yeah. I can't put my I can't put no. one team down that goes. Oh, here's an automatic. No, one. there's there's yeah, no. This yeah. is an automatic. I mean, no. I don't like the Fall City Sacred Hearts girls. You know, yesterday yeah. I could have maybe put them in a ticket and then, you know yeah, maybe you grab one other it. team. You know, yeah. but but you know, but I mean, I'll tell you that's see one thing. If somebody said, hey, they went, nobody could be sixteen to one. Yeah. <laughs> you know, there's eight yeah. teams in there. They're all going to be kind of low. Yeah. And Boys Town, can they give SCOTUS a game after? Boys Town could win it. Yeah. They could, and, and with, with, you know, Cordell Kate and some of those other guys playing, playing well, better as yeah. the year goes on, uh, you know, and again, they'll, Tom will throw that zone at you, and if you're not shooting well, uh, Boys Town's long enough and athletic enough to give people problems. And, you know, getting back to the O'Neill game, I, and, and no disrespect to O'Neill's no. kids, but I, I just see – that could get to be a 15, 20 point game in Newman's favor. They just wear you out, and, and whether they play zone or man. Doesn't make any difference, does it? I, it, it doesn't, and Mike, you know, Mike's philosophy is we're going to do what we're going to do, and you know, if it works, it works, and if it doesn't, it doesn't. But, uh, and, and I could, could be way out base, but I really like Newman's chances in that one. I do too, and, and now that he realizes he has talent on his bench that he can use that he yeah. did before. <laughs> but, so I, I, I've got Winnebago and Newman in the finals. If that would happen, what do you think, E.W.? Do you think that's going to happen or not? Or do you like Scotus? <laughs> I really don't know who to take out of that bottom bracket. I, I think I think there's three legitimate teams out there that could possibly get in there. I, you know, I'll throw Boys Town in there too. But you know, if it's Winnebago and Newman, I mean that that's going to be that's going to be a, a great matchup, and that's what uh, you'll probably look forward to on Saturday out of them all. You know, I yeah. mean, you got the Gretna and Aurora, but Winnebago and and Newman, uh, that could be a great matchup out there. And, you know, I, I just think Winnebago has the drive from last year of not making it to that point and just trying to finish yeah. the business this year. See, what bothers me, you guys, is that I keep thinking of going back to that Winnebago-St. Cecilia game and how they – I mean, they just wore St. Cecilia out. Sure. St. Cecilia got in a little bit of foul trouble, too. Yeah, they did. You guys, let's think about this one. Let's think about this matchup. Let's say Wahoo wins the top oh, they, bracket. Yeah, yeah, yeah they, they could. could. They could. Oh, okay. Who could they be playing? Yeah, I know. Wahoo Newman. Newman again, in a, yeah. In a state championship. Yeah. And before that, you could have Newman playing SCOTUS again. Yeah. Can yeah. you yeah. imagine these matchups? Oh, I mean, it's yeah. amazing, these yeah. matchups that you could yeah. have. It's like you yeah. said, that, I mean, you'd have to take the entire field in C1 to be able to get a pick six down. Yeah, yeah. 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 exactly. I and mean, if you wanted to, you, you might be able to get rid of uh, O'Neill and Carney Catholic just because you don't think Carney Catholic could win three games. Yeah, well, yeah. you got to think I mean? about that. But, yeah. I mean, just because it'd be hard for them to yeah. win three. Yeah. Yeah, and so, but that'd be the only two I'd take and pull out of there. So I'm going to go with uh, Newman over Winnebago, but I don't know. That Bago team just scares the heck out of me. But, man, Newman is the, every phase of their game is good. I don't know how you attack them and win that game. Anybody can see one. I just don't know. I hope they don't shoot well. Mm -hmm. No, I, I suppose, and yeah. Honestly, you and just hope they don't shoot well. Well, don't you think playing – Scotus and playing Newman, if they pay their A game, the best game they can play, Newman wins, right? I, Against you guys, if you guys played really well. New, Newman would be a tougher matchup for, for our team. Exactly. You know, just mm. be, just because mm. of, of what they do, their style. Sure. Scotus is more like our style, which, mm -hmm. you know, they got us early in the season. But I think for our team, Newman would have been a tougher matchup for I us. think so, too. Well, let's go on to C2 because we can talk about yeah. C1 until the cows come home. St. Cecilia, uh, well, they get a pretty, they get a good draw with Southwest down in, uh, is that the old Republican Valley High School? I yeah, they yeah, yeah we're in now, but, uh, and I think, them. who's the yeah. assistant? Uh, <laughs> 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 who's the student manager? Who's the cowboy? I don't think I know who the coach is. Yeah, 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 yeah. we won't even ask any questions no, about anything in Southwest. Oh, this word was Victor and the big green McCook and a rap on. And what's their school colors on? Yeah, 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 school colors. So They're the Rough Riders. Yeah, Rough Riders, that's about all I know. I didn't even know that. Uh, <laughs> who's the second? We've got St. Well, Cecilia. Well, we've got St. Cecilia will be playing Southwest in the 1-8 matchup. Uh, they will get the winner of Amherst, Neely Oakdale. Could be a rematch of the district final there. 
Um, the number two seed is Elmwood Murdoch. They get number seven, Oakland Craig. And then Ponca and Centennial in the, in the bottom half of that. Um, you know, you know, if everything go, lines up, that Elmo Murdoch Ponca game could be a really good matchup in that Ooh. C2. Um, you know, that top half, we, we've already seen St. Cecilia against Amherst. Oh. It wasn't that good of a matchup. I don't know if maybe the second time around, now that you've been hit with that wave, if that can be a little bit different. Um, but you also got to throw Neely Oakdale in there, too. Yeah. I think uh, they, they have a, a decent chance of uh, against Amherst as well. So. Anybody over here? I like that Neely Oakdale team over Amherst. I, and I don't know whether their defense can't be as good as St. Cecilia, but the poor Amherst kids couldn't get anything inside at all. They couldn't no. penetrate anything. And, of course, there isn't any defense like that in C2. But, um, I, I, well, okay, so who's – anybody want to go out on a limb and pick uh, who would be in the finals against St. Cecilia? It's if – and if the – St. Cecilia is going to get to the finals. Yeah, they will. St. Cecilia is in the finals. Who is it, Ponca? Ponca? Elmo and Murdoch? Uh, I think Ponca – Elmo and Murdoch upset somebody last year. Didn't they beat Winnebago? Be, yeah, beat yeah, Winnebago. Beat Winnebago. And, and, and they played you guys pretty tough. I think they got a nice basketball team. They, they do. Yeah, they I'm do. not saying St. Cecilia is just a lock to win no. state. But I'll tell you what, what a great coaching job this year. Oh, Me, yeah. I mean, you know, yeah. I'll tell you what, last year, they, you know the players they had on that St. Cecilia team last year? Oh, yeah. yeah that, what a, what I mean, and then you have to turn around and you lose, what, they lose five, six games this year? I mean, they lost Yeah, five, games, I think, they, yeah. And then they beat um, Fillmore Central in December in overtime. Uh, they beat uh, Carney Catholic by two. So they've had, this wasn't like last year's team where they won by so many points every time, every yeah. time out. And they actually competed really well against SCOTUS. Yes, and they did. They you did. know, yeah. this year there was, a, there was a gap there. But what a great coaching job to make yourself the favorite. Well, I think it'll be a tough game between St. Cecilia and Elmore Murdoch than it was last year. Yeah. Or St. Cecilia and Ponk. I heard good yeah. things about Ponk. Yeah. 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 I think Elmwood Murdoch with their, maybe the tough matchup for St. Cecilia. Just because they've been there before, oh, yeah. And yeah. Size you wise. know what? It, yeah, yeah. And, 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 and their their size inside, right? Exactly. Yeah. You know, and, and I was planning on going down Friday. I was trying to figure out places that I want to go. You know, I may not be at the Pinnacle very much. That Devaney side of it uh, for the semifinals. You've got the the Elmwood Murdoch Ponca matchup possibly being the three forty five game at Devaney, and you know that that one intrigues me right there. You mm -hmm. know that type of deal. But you know, going back to your Saint Cecilia deal, we talked about it earlier in the year. These kids that are playing now. You know, the groups in front of them got them better during practice. Oh, you know, yeah, they were exactly. going up against yep. great uh, teams at St. Cecilia, and they were they were learning the tough way of going up against them day in and day out, and that's what's got them to the point they're at today and have a number one seed. Yeah, Kevin Asher, I mean, his practice is, the, I mean, the, the, the guy is a competitor. Oh, yeah. He yeah. is a competitor. He loves to compete himself. I mean, I heard a story about him when he was coaching at O'Neill Baseball. They got beat. And I think they, they had practice like from midnight to four in the yeah. morning. Yeah. I'm, I'm sure, I'm yeah. sure he let them out at three. The, 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 the story yeah. got exaggerated. Yeah, sure. But the lights well, go off automatically. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but but we, 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 the neighbors are looking around going, what's going on? Yeah. Yeah. But anyway, to make a long story short on that, I just think he's he really, they, they do things the right way. You guys, yeah. when, I, when I go out and referee them, they are setting screens to try to oh, get people open that. all the time. And they're oh. really working hard on setting screens. They're you the, know. physically the toughest team we have to go against. There you're you in, go. You're out. Just simply because their kids do everything right, like you said, when they set screens, they you know that they've hit you with a good solid screen. And, and, and one of the things I respect about Kevin this year is he hasn't backed down or tailored anything differently to this group just because he had five new players on the floor. Yeah. He's done it the same way he's done it every year, and I think that's been a huge benefit. And, and uh, you know, they're, they're just a tough team to prepare for. They've got five guys that can score and hurt you. And, and not only the starters, but we saw it the other night against Amherst when the, when the JV yeah, squad came kept, in. They did the exact same yeah, thing. Yeah, you know, you know Jack Hall, Thompson, yeah. and Furman come in. There's not a lot of drop-off. No, you know, they got seven, eight deep. Yeah, they yeah, would say, or is it more than that? Uh, you know, last they, year was about 10, I'd 11 say, deep. I'd say yeah. state, for the state tournament, that's probably seven or seven. Seven okay, with, with Furman and Thompson sure. now. I love that Boyd kid inside, don't you? I'll tell, Man, tell you, I'll tell you what, his what. brother was, was a, a really good player, but, uh, you know, Blaine's turning into a really good player, too. Finishes with both hands and just doesn't do anything that's not solid. Hey, 
Who was the quarterback on that football team? What was his name from St. Cecilia? And he also plays basketball. Boy, don't you like that Grant Schmidt? I'll Whoa. tell you what. What a nice yeah. player. Oh. And, and then Asher's son, you know, I think he's probably been in the gym a time or two. Yeah, right? he, and, and there again, the kid doesn't do anything to hurt the team. He's right. solid at yeah. everything he does. And that's what, every, I mean, Farmer's the same way. Yeah, Asher's good the point. same way. Yeah, we didn't even talk about Farmer. Yeah, there, there's, no, a, there's yeah. a guy that could probably score 15, 20 well, game on a different team. Oh, he yeah, he'd be the go-to yeah. guy. Yeah, yeah, he'd be go-to guy. And I'll tell you what, when Southwest is there, but that Southwest coach is going, hey, I'll tell you what, let's just pick up teams. Yeah. Here's my five, and this go your five, and then I'll tell, let's start taking some guys yeah. off your bench yeah, right that's now. Exactly yeah, right. Right. Yeah. 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 Thompson yeah. starting. Yeah. Yeah. And then you got Austin Ash, who nobody hears about, but can kill you from a three-year drive. Yeah. Anyway, okay, so we probably have consensus. St. Cecilia, how about Class D1? My favorite is right on top of the bracket, Lutheran High Northeast, who drops down from C2 to D1 this year. They played a wicked schedule, too. Uh, who's their draw? Lutheran High is the three seed. They get Heartland out okay. of that. Um, uh, the one seed in this is Dundee, Co uh, Dundee County, who this is actually a rematch of the girls' the Girls' finals. Yeah. Yeah. Guardian yeah. Angels. So um, they will, uh, they're the one seed. The two seed is Lords, uh, Central Catholic, and they get Burwell. That, you know, that, a sneaky that can, game right yeah, there. Yeah, that, um, that, that is 2-7 um, game. Um, and then we, like we mentioned, the three seeds, Lutheran High, and they got Heartland, and then the four is BDS, and they got Randolph. So, uh, you know, there's there's a few good matchups in here, I think. Uh, but uh, you know, that Dundee County Guardian Angel, that I, I I don't know if Guardian Angel can can stay with them or not in that one. I don't know at that one seed. Anybody from the Magic Circle can stay well, with somebody from the Western you know, part in, of the in, state. I think. In watching film on Boone Central, we happen to get their Guardian. Angels game, and so I've got a little bit of background on them. They've got three or four guys that can really shoot the ball well from the perimeter. They're not overly big, but you know, with their conference schedule in the mid states, they played O'Neill, they That's played Boone Jesus. Central, uh, you know, they, they played Pierce, who's, who's you know tough, and they played Wayne, who was you know four seconds away from getting in the state tournament. Way better schedule than Dundee County's draft. Yeah, and Wayne. that's not it's to just, take just anything just away from Dundee's kids, no, but I, no. I, I could see an eight, eight no. seed win in the, that game. The difference between Dundee County Stratton's girls where they were beating Cambridge. Oh, they by, were though. Yeah. Yeah, they beat they were they, they beat Cambridge by like thirty points, and Cambridge yeah. is a seed. C2 state yeah, qualifier. Yeah. Dundee County Stratton doesn't have that in the boys. Yeah. They have a nice team. I'm not taking anything away no. from them. I would be amazed if the two and three seed did not win D1. And yeah. your two seed is Lords, Lords. and your three yeah. seeds is Nebraska L Lutheran, right? Yeah, yeah. 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 Lutheran High North. And, and, yeah. and where are they located at? Uh, North 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 North. Yeah. Yeah. I think it's those two. I, I do too. The I two like and those the two. three, one of the whoever can wins that game wins the whole thing. I, I agree with you. Yeah. I agree Burwell with got a bad matchup with Lourdes. Boy, that's well, a tough and, team. And you know, Heartland, I'll tell you what, you know, the, 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 the group out of Henderson, perhaps off to that team. Yeah. You know, hey, you know what, they uh, they were down to Kennesaw, and it was a tough game. I refereed that game, and that game could have gone either way. And both teams played really fought hard because they knew Whoever won that game might go to state. Yeah, you know yeah. what I mean. Yeah. You know the they winner of that kid. I saw yeah. Heartland yeah. games. Yeah, got a good chance to go to and two state. Two pretty good teams. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But you know, for them to try to compete with that next echelon, that's gonna be a that's a tough group. Yeah. yeah. And I do want to say congrats to uh, you know Clark Ribble who was who oh, went he, to high school with Clark and has yeah. done a great job with with that Heartland team and very happy for him getting to state with that group. I'm gonna make a funny prediction here. I think guard. I think Lutheran High Northeast will beat Lourdes. And I think Guardian Angels will advance and upset BDS, and that's going to set up a final where Lutheran High Northeast will have the biggest spread in the championship game of any of these games. I think Lutheran High Northeast is going to win. For entertainment purposes only. Entertainment yes. purposes yes. only. And I'm going to just steal like yeah. seven other teams in this yeah. bracket. Because, you know, all the girls' games yesterday. Really good games. All, like, every one of them came Double out of the wire for the yes. most part, don't they you did. think? I yeah. mean, every one of them was a very, very, very competitive. Close, yeah, yeah, very close game. But I'm like you. I think that uh, C2 and D1 boys, there could be some big, big yeah. spreads in the finals. Yeah. Yeah. So now down to class D two. This is a tough class too. It is. You got some great teams. Look in at this. There. Look at you know Crawford was twenty five and one and didn't get in yeah. on the wild card. One yep. loss. And, yeah. and they didn't get in. Sem twenty and two. No, uh, eighteen and maybe nineteen and two. Yeah, don't, did, don't not, did not get in and beat Amherst, a team that got in on a wild card yeah. in C two, yeah. not D one. Yeah, we're going C two. You know, you guys. What this reminds me of is be like. In Class D, 
Talk, go to the state track meet. You got a high jump six four. Yeah. Yeah. Unbelievable. Yeah. And, but, in, but in class C, you only had the high jump six one. Yeah. Isn't that yeah. You get it. Yeah. And you've oh, seen yeah. that before when you get that sheet of paper out. Because what they do, they, 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 you know, the state sets that up on how the sixth place qualifier did last yeah. year, the year yeah. before. And so if you just might luck out and oh look, yeah. I'm jump twenty one seven this yeah. year. Yeah. That's exactly right. The state right. track the <laughs> yeah. Yeah. So I'll have Eric E. W. read the field to us. I think I love Riverside on top. Yeah, you've got to be happy for them. Riverside, the one seed. Um, they'll play Garden County, um, and they'll get the winner of the Humphrey St. Francis Mullen game, which Ooh, is a great, great, great matchup. Deal, yeah. yeah. Uh, Mead is the three seed, and they got Juanita Palisade, kind of a, a tough draw there, I think. And then uh, number two is Parkview Christian, and they got Why Not, another uh, that's, tough That's uh, a tricky draw. Yeah. So, um, again, that bottom half uh, is pretty entertaining. Uh, like you said, you, you kind of like Riverside to get past Garden County. Humphrey San Francis Mullen, that's oh. kind of a toss up, yeah, too, I, don't I know think. What to and, think about that. and then the bottom two, I think, are coin flips as well. Did Riverside, and I know you could look this up real quick, did Riverside play Humphrey St. Francis this year? They did, and I think they beat them either one by two or lost by two, I can't remember. The St. Francis and Riverside. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, so that's going to be a pretty good game. Yeah. I think this, I will say this about D2, I think there's four teams that can win it. Mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah, and absolutely. I think there's four other teams that just made it to stay. Yeah, yeah, got it. And yeah, yeah. So I, you know, when we yeah. were talking, so I mean, yeah. whether that you know that, that's right or not, I would agree. I would agree. With yeah, that. with yeah. D two, but what what a tough group. Oh yeah, yeah, what a tough group to get in. Yeah, because yeah. they took those wild cards. They were all in the same sub district, in district. You know, yeah. I mean, uh, yeah. Who who is the who's the three seed in there? So who is it? The three seed was me. Yeah, see, they, they got beat. That's a they got team. beat. They didn't get to their sub-district final. No, no they no. did not. You know what I mean? Yeah, 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 yeah. And hey, you're the third seed. Yeah. You get yeah. in. Yeah. yeah. So, yeah. I mean, you talk about all those. That, that's what's unfair kind of about the wild card sometimes. Yeah. It's the, the, the serpentining them. It's fair. Yeah, it's probably you know, it's probably fair with the serpentine. Process. But, yeah. you know, because you could get three or four schools. I know one time St. Cecilia. Um, they did not get in, and they beat Southern Valley. Yes, like, yes, and, they did. And, and, and then, and then uh, Donovan Trumbull beats Saint to say, Well, Donovan Trumbull gets upset. Yeah. Well, they take two of the schools get wild cards out of that. Yeah, could have been all three of them. Yeah, you know, yeah. yeah. Would you right. could have. Yeah. yeah, you just hate to end up in a deal yeah. like that. Honest to goodness, I thought SCM would get a wild card in that class. I, yeah, if they were mathematically eliminated before that game started. Isn't that? Yeah, so you, I mean, if you figured it out, yeah. well, I mean, you could, I could figure. And so was so was Crawford. Yeah, they were mathematically eliminated. You know, that. it was only down to four teams that could get them. Yeah. yeah. I think Mead gets to the semifinals. I like that basketball. Team. Yeah, Mead, Mead's a tough, tough schedule. Tough, tough schedule. Oh. They're battle tested. They played Mead played fourteen schools in Class C. Yeah, yeah I mean, that's a good. I was, I was going to bring up. You talked about the wild card points, and I think D two. You see a lot of the wild card points be that factor, just because they are moving up. Some of these teams are moving up and playing those C teams like a Mead, and that's mm-hmm. what helps them out. Yeah, yeah, they're 17 and 6, but who are their six losses? Well, yeah, they have no bad, no bad losses. Right, right. exactly. Great point. Yeah, yeah. yeah. D2's kind of tough because you can't play down. No, yeah. exactly. You, <laughs> you know what I mean? Yeah, you know what I mean? Play some of JV. Yeah, yeah. 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 And you can be so isolated to where it's hard to play D2 schools. Yeah, and yeah. that's yeah. true. Yeah. travel yeah. and everything right. like play that. Play the same teams over and over, yeah. Yeah, what's really kind of unfair about that is is you could have a team like an Elba. Yeah. Who's in D two? Yeah, you know what I mean. And yeah. somebody has had the courtesy to say, "Oh, we're going to go ahead and play you. We'll, <laughs> we'll, we'll play. You yeah. need some games, and we'll go ahead and play you." Yeah. And you know what ends up happening? So you only get forty one points, points for the win. Yeah. So it, could, it ends up hurting you. And especially if, if they call up and go, "Hey, we're going to have to just forfeit." Yeah. yeah. Okay. Yeah, then you want to play anyway. I mean, yeah. you know, well, now yeah. we get forty one. You know. Yeah. So I mean, and I, I'm not, I'm not trying to say anything wrong about the wild cards. But I know ADs look at that stuff. Oh, they oh do. sure they do. Sure they they do. look at that and they think, hey, I don't know if this is right. We better not yeah. play this game because this is not going to help us. Yeah. I don't know when they do. Yeah. Coaches yeah. Right. and ADs yeah. do. Yeah. You're absolutely you right. I, I wouldn't do it. I, it no. Just, it's just no, and I'll tell you what, if you can play a winning, if you're in Class C1 and you can play a winning team with a winning record in D1 or D2, it's beneficial. Oh, sure it is. You're going, hey, we're going to win. We'll probably get a win. Yeah, get 47 and, points. Yeah, and not only that, they don't lose so much because they get to they take you, the loss and they start you, adding up their get points. Get the two bonus points. points yeah, right, for playing. playing. Up, sure. You bet. And sure. they feel like they've got a shot against you anyway. Yeah, they yeah, think so they so might beat you. Yeah. You bet. That's exactly right. I think it's funny because I talked to Joe Imus from Riverside, and his father-in-law is a superintendent down 
uh, Randy Geyer down in Juanita Palisade. He was hoping that matchup didn't come up, but anyway. Yeah, are they playing, huh? Yeah, are they, yeah. no, they didn't play. They're okay. on the opposite sides okay, of the bracket. There you go. Mead is Wapaw plays Mead. Yeah. But I like Parkview and Riverside in the finals. Honest to goodness, I flipped the coin a hundred times and I still couldn't come up with who. Let's just say that matchup comes up. Do you know much about Parkview? I do not, no. Did you see him play at Central Catholic? No. Never, okay. No. Um, you know about him. Jimmy, I don't know if you yeah, you've had Riverside, I'm sure. Yeah. But yeah. yeah. Parkview, big and athletic. How do you get inside? Well, no, this is Division II player, 6'9", going to Wayne State. And then you've got Henry Tanksley outside, who's about a 6'2", 6'3", guard that is averaging 20-some a game. And then they've had a couple other kids late in the season step up and, and, and hit double figures. And... It, you know, and it, it's very strange to see a, a team that athletic and that physical and big at a D2 I level know. And, and have two kids that can go off for 20 some on any given night. And, but, you know, you look at Riverside, their kids are so skilled. And, and Joe does well, a great job with them, too. That, that to me, would be a great final to see. I think, but, you know, in, the, in this, Gildner played a great game. And you told me about Gildner was a nice team. Well, they played a good game against Riverside. But they were, Prasovsky, the freshman, was driving in, so was... No velocity. You ain't gonna do that against Parkview, are you? Or how can you drive in on somebody? That's Maybe not. Maybe not. They're good, but they might get them in foul trouble. I was that's say, you know what I mean? They another thing. They're trouble. not overly deep. Parkview's no, not. Yeah, no, no. In fact, they're very. They play they're, one, maybe one kid off. Yeah. Of thin, in fact, man. I'll tell you what. Yeah. Parkview Christian really uh, loses it from. I mean, as far, as far as the depth <laughs> transport. And you know what? Most teams do. That's why. I, it was a great story about the Red Cloud girls and the yeah. six players they had. Yeah. But, guy, we've talked about that before. A lot of D2 girls' teams play with two or three players. Yeah, yeah that's yeah. just you know what right. And, and right. now they got five out there on the floor, but they got a bench and they got 14 girls out, but none of those seven girls are ever going to get in. Yeah, yeah they're they're exactly. get in. No, they're, they're not, not going to contribute. Get to play. Yeah, yeah, they're, they're not, not going to contribute to the win be big in, yeah, yeah. in state tournament. But, yeah. they, they, but those people need to go out and get better for next well, year, exactly. et cetera. I love yeah. the idea to be on the program. Oh, sure. But I'm just saying it's not a rarity. So when these teams get in foul trouble, if they get in foul trouble, they're going to get beat. Yeah. Well, they are. Yeah. That's yeah. right. I, I, if, so, they, if it's that matchup, I see Riverside that first, you know, four minutes of that first quarter just attacking the rim. Yeah, yeah, I do. I do too. That, I do too. The devil's advocate. Yeah. They either get a them into foul trouble, or you're going to get into foul trouble, and then you're going to have to play back. Either yeah. Way. Right. Yeah. And you know, I'm going to give you some teams, but I know we're about done. But I'm going to no, give you no some problem. teams, and tell me if they get in foul trouble, if they're going to get beat. Ready, Boys Town. Yes. Oh, yeah. yeah. Got absolutely. it? Okay. Yep. Absolutely. Wahoo well, Newman. Maybe no. not. No. no. SCOTUS. Maybe not. No, they don't. No. You get it? Yeah. Oh, yeah. I mean, so yeah. Yeah. Those point. are great. Yeah. Points. yeah. I mean, I think this is a really critical point yeah. about winning three games down there. Yeah. 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 Because yeah. what you have to do sometimes is you have to take, when you get down eight, ten points, you have to start taking some risk. Yeah. You do. Yeah. yeah. Like, I might go over the back for this rebound because I got to get, we got, we can't, I got to get, we got to cut it to eight now. Yeah. Where when you're up 10 or 12 points, you don't have to take that yeah. risk. You're thinking, ah, this is a dumb risk. I've got two fouls. This probably isn't a good situation. Yeah. We're still early in the third quarter. I don't want to get myself in trouble. And I think players that understand that, it really helps their team out. And, it, it does, Jimmy. Yeah, great it really, point. And, well, and, and, and St. Cecilia will not be in that problem no, no, until no. the final. Yeah. Then they have some guys. They got some guys out there, pretty good athletes. They don't want those guys getting in foul trouble. Yeah, your your, your because, Smiths and your boys have to stay on the floor, and that's what happened against Winnebago. Yeah, they, you're, you're right. They did foul out, but they got in foul trouble, so they couldn't take those risks going yeah, right. over rebounds and doing that stuff. So, well, that's yeah. where coaching comes yeah. into play because mm -hmm. a guy gets his third foul with, you know, three and a half minutes in the third quarter. You've got to make a decision: Do I keep him out there to keep it close, or do I? Set him three minutes into the fourth because he just picked up his fourth foul, yeah. okay. or or you know do we press and, and and try you know and try to speed up tempo and, and risk getting fouls well, not, that way? Not only subbing them out, but if yeah. you don't sub them out, getting into the kid's head saying, "Hey, yeah, you got to be smart out there and things right. like that." Yeah, and that's yeah that's where I think coaching and, and like you mentioned, Jimmy, the, the the intelligence factor for kids, basketball IQ comes into play there. It's all about matchups, isn't it? It and, is, and, it, and who knows other than smart guys like. At least you three, not me. Well, no, all four of us are very smart. But but how do you know that's that? That's the first time I've heard that. Yeah. <laughs> As a general public, how do you know that? You're going to say, well, this is going to be a great matchup. If, if Luther and High Northeast, for instance, would get in foul trouble, Riverside could beat them by 15 points if the guys, mm -hmm. right guys aren't on the floor. Sure. Well, sure. You yeah. don't know that, though, unless you know about matchups. Well, especially so. basketball, I think, too. You know, that's... Ooh. 
it's, it's and you have more depth in class A and class B, right. probably. But you know, some of the, and I know we're ending this. I, but before we end, I, I want to make sure that I say something about the Carney Catholic girls who got second. You know, and I thought they played a very smart game. They yeah, played they did. good defense. They gave themselves a, an opportunity to beat the number one ranked team in the entire state. Yeah. yeah. It came down to a 50-50 game, yeah. Yeah. and they did everything correct. They and did. they did. You know, they gave themselves a chance. And also, Ravana competed very well. Yep. Yes, and they the did. The girls, they got third, third place. place. That was, they that got was... third, and, you know, they, they, were, they got a wild card. Yeah. They, they were one of the teams. And you know who they played this year? They played Ord. I know. They played Carney Catholic. And, you know, they, they played those types of people, yeah. St. Cecilia. They had some schedule. They had a tough schedule. Yeah, they did. And look at, look at Ord, how they did, too. They almost had Carney Catholic yeah. on the yeah. ropes. Or they'd be in the ropes. So, you know, when we talk about area teams, those are yeah. some of the teams that did a nice job. Ord were getting their win. Yep. Uh, Carney Catholic getting their win. Ravana getting their win. All Luke Black Conference teams, yeah. you know, got, got themselves a win early and, and competed well. And I thought they had nice state tournaments. Even they didn't win a championship. Yeah. Those are great stories. Also, I want to throw the Red Cloud story in there. Okay, yeah, that was I mean, a great it, deal. It, it, it's kind of a Hoosiers-esque type of sure. thing with six girls. They didn't win their game uh, Thursday night, but, you know, with a minute left in the time, or they take a timeout, and then they go over and thank all of Red Cloud. Basically, Standing the entire ovation. Town, yeah. yeah, basically the entire town was out there uh, for that game, and then they take the timeout and thank their fans for the support there, too. I thought that was an awesome story. They end up getting the... Um, the, the student uh, award for the yeah, class. Yeah, they did. I saw that this yeah. morning. Really cool. For that, that well. And not only that, I think that we did a nice job of uh, not, uh, you know, the, the story was great, and I thought it was handled well by everybody. Mm -hmm. You yeah. know what I mean? It yeah. really was. It was yeah. a unique story, and it will be like you see Hoosiers. This will probably go down 30 years from now. You yeah. don't think Red Cloud High School? I mean, you know, when they come back for their reunion. Oh, yeah, that'll be talking about six yeah. girls. Yeah. 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 You got six <laughs> girls? Oh, that's a beautiful. That's yeah. a, I'm sorry, I just bought me a swear. Like, like, yeah. That's a, that's a. Yeah. I'd just like to be the PA announcer. Now the non starters for Red Cloud. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Pretty easy job. Yeah. 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 The whole seat. place goes wild. Yeah. Yeah. You know what I mean? Yeah. 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 You might get more recognition. Yeah. Going, hey, you know what? I'm going to let you guys know something. I never started that. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, no, yeah. You were the one. I wonder who that was. Yeah. How about that? You All know, right. what, and I do. She got the six six man. Six man. Yeah. 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 Hey, I'll yeah. tell you what. Yeah. Yeah. Can you? I might. You know what? I might. You know what? The four of us ought to do just for the hell of it. Let's do it. Right? So we're gonna do it. Hey, well, I'm driving. You're driving. <laughs> we're gonna go to their uh, banquet. Yeah. When they had their athletic banquet, I want to go up there, and we're gonna go wild when they announce the six, six, the six man. Six award. man award. Yeah, yeah, no, no, no argument. Then we're gonna leave. Then we're gonna leave. We'll leave. Yeah. And we'll leave. We want to watch the rest of the banquet. <laughs> Red Cloud, get ready. We're coming. Uh, Jim is driving. Yeah. You know, if I can mention one other thing okay. here, I uh, something transpired on Friday that. Uh, you can put that down. Uh, this guy right here is going to be announcing the uh, Boys and Girls Class C1 State Tournament at the Bob Devaney Sports Center next year. Thank so, you. And uh, that's a cool deal. So that's great to see you do that and well-deserved. Thank you. Hey, good, good, congratulations. Thank you. Hey, good deal. Thank a good you. way to end the show for the year right here. <laughs> well, whatever. End it, end it up and let's get out of here. i got to get to the races. <laughs> The double's already done, so hey, okay. yeah, that big exact in the third. That's the winners, Jimmy. Yeah, let's go. Cool. Guys, it went awful quick this year, and I was so proud to have Rob on this show. But uh, oh, Tino, for having wherever me. you are, yeah, thanks for being here. And this is only three hours later. Zach, may you be in the camera. As always, steady, Eddie. E-Dub, thanks for doing yep. it, man. Eric Williams and Jimmy always. Yeah, and, good of course, time. Rob. Yep. And it went quickly, so we'll be back next year. Uh, we'll be back next year for football, hopefully. Uh, Lord willing, the creek don't rise. So for Jimmy Lang and Rob Meesey and Eric Williams, this is Bobby Mills for the Independent.com saying it's been a great year on the Bobby Mills Independent Sports Talk Program.